Amen, amen, amen. He rules over all reigns. the earth. He reigns. He rules, he reigns, has dominion and power. And that same reign and yes. ruling authority and power, he is delegated yes. and covenant over to the sons of God. Yes, now, that's a good place to shine and run around amen. the room. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Kenny Tennyson from Victory Word of Faith. We are delighted and ecstatic that you chose to tune in this afternoon for our Bible study evening service. And uh, we thank God that uh, you, of course, got your Bibles and your pencil and paper to take copious notes. And this is the foundation that we're building. And the uh, Bible says, he that builds the building don't first set down and count the cost. That if he or she does not finish that building, that people will mark them. That's Luke 4, 14, if you want to research it. He said, because when you don't finish what you start, then the people who observe you will say they started a work that they was not able to finish. The worst thing in life to have a whole lot of unfinished projects in your life. So that being understood, we've just, this is a spinoff from building the foundation, rediscovering the kingdom that's been buried on the rubbish of religion. The wall, the windows, the graph, graph, the scaffolding, the roof, the tiles, and we even put a smoke smoke pipe on it. Cause like Sister Henderson just prayed, it is hot fire. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was growing up, you know, I ain't always been saved. My first car that my daddy bought me, that red Monte Carlo, I still got out there in the backyard. The first tape I bought was Bill Howell Players. Fire, dog, 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 dog. Okay, okay, okay. I go and repent. Get out of here, you religious minded people. But anyway, but it's fire. The Bible says God is fire, like fire that shut up in our bones. Amen. So we thank God for you tuning in and we're building the foundation of rediscovering the kingdom of God. And he said that he that, of course, hear these sayings of mine and, of course, and do them, not just hear them. And then he said, I would liken him, reckon him into a wise man or woman who built their foundation on a solid work, solid foundation, that when the rain and the floods and storms came, he, he said that it was they, they would be able to stand, just like Sister Henderson was just, just ministering. I tell you, it bless my soul, because that's the truth. And uh, that's what I go, and I was listening today on Facebook where this young lady, even in the G7, G20 summit, was commissioning and challenging all the nations of the world. To show you, what we're teaching, please don't take it lightly. These teachings and this message that God has divided, divided down, loaded into our spirit, First Lady and I, and those who have an ear to hear, to let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And he was telling them, say, look, you have to put aside that trillion dollars, billions and trillions of dollars that she was commissioning these uh, rulers and, and, and leaders of the nations and to, for them to prepare a future for their citizenry. Mm -hmm. And that's just like the kingdom. But we know that we are in another kingdom yes. uh, rulership, and yes. it's the kingdom of God, God. and the right. kingdom of heaven. Amen. Right. Amen. That will never run dry. That's right. That, so then say it will. He said, "I'll never let you be put to shame." Right. But this natural world, we understand there are some mm -hmm. impediments that we have because men sometimes are naturally in charge of this natural world. But anyway, she was challenging them, and it was so uh, thought provoking because she dealt with uh, the conditions of California around this world and uh, the fires and in, in California and the flooding in Kentucky and all around the globe, tsunamis, earthquakes, and that if they didn't do something soon, mm -hmm. that they would, they, it would be too late to yes, apologize yes. to their constituents mm -hmm. about global warming, uh, uh, even about uh, the plight that we have with uh, the murder and mayhem in mm -hmm. our streets. And we don't have to even talk about it because you're seeing it every day in the news mm -hmm. about the That's government right. and politics and mm -hmm. corruption mm -hmm. at the highest level. That's right. I mean, corruption on top of corruption. And then the church has has, has Teflon tape on their mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, we might well tell the truth because we're going to integrate into the culture to where we have found that it's politically correct to fit in so that we can oh be accepted. God. It's called uh, 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 fitting in and then popping out when we get inside and start looking like the culture we're in. That's a whole other teaching. But that's what we're also dealing with is that uh, men and women have gone on uh, uh, national TV and say things that uh, is t almost and it, it's really antichrist uh, 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 when we consider that we have allowed uh, the nation to begin to swelter in our very presence 
uh, the, 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 the turning away from the constitution and the civil rights and democracy that we have, this nation have been built upon. And we know democracy, no democracy have ever lasted. Even way back to those five that I teach you, Assyria, Babylon, Rome, the Greeks, all of them, and Persia, all of them failed because of immorality. Mm -hmm. And what we are talking about, that's so apropos. Yes. It's not It's not time to be stroking people's emotions and that's telling right. little sweet lullaby yes. stories from, yes. from, from the holy constitution of God's word. Mm -hmm. We have to speak just like Paul did. I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna take you there, where he faced off with all the religious denominations of this earth when he uh, addressed uh, the, the Mars Hill and he told them he didn't compromise, he didn't blend in with them. He was very adamant and succinct on one thing. He said that it's required men everywhere to repent. Matthew 4 and 17, he said, what? He said, when he came out of the Jordan River, came and after his temptations, the three temptations by Satan, it is written. And he says, what? That, what, these words, he came out here and repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Change how you've been conditioned and pro programmed and trained to think. That's the message that John came out with. Jesus yes, co-signed it, yes, the same school of right. thought, mm -hmm. the same master teacher. He mm -hmm. said, a student ought to be like his teacher, but we wandered totally off the forbidden path. Jesus. And he told him, so, Matthew, go read it. It's 10, 7 said this message. He was specific because he knew that man would always go and start teaching everything but what he that commissioned them to teach. From Matthew 28 to Mark 16, he says, teach them that the kingdom of God has arrived and we have horribly failed at disseminating that message. However, I got good news for you, brothers and sisters. Matthew 24, 14, go read it. The whole chapter for homework. He says, and the end is not yet until this message, they were at this message again, has been heralded echoed, co-signed to the, all the nations of the world. And he says, and only then the end will come. That lets you know you can unpack your grip. We're not going anywhere anytime soon, no matter how horrible and horrendous and how pan, 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 pandemic, no matter whether it's whatever you may think it may be with the economy falling apart. Listen, until the message of the kingdom Right. have mm -hmm. been heralded to all over the nations. Mm -hmm. That's the original message that Jesus came to this earth with, and he has not us in it and all remembered it. And guess what? And I read in the Holy Writ, the Constitution, he said heaven and earth would pass away uh, before this word, one word that he has spoken, fall to the ground. So guess what? You can just get, just get in this word and discover what? Those five things we shared, I ain't gonna tell them, going back and say, who am I? Why am I here? Where did I come from? And where am I going? What's my potential? What potential do I have? Yeah. And what's my destiny? He said, many are the plan strategies of a man, but only the purpose of the Lord that will stand. That's the key. Only God's purpose. So we have to realize he's buried it in a place where all of us can find it. And he, as he says, it's inside of each and every one of us if we seek it out. And that's why we've been teaching previous lessons about releasing the governor, the Holy Spirit, the one that comes and reveals all truth to all of us. And he's not disseminating four, five different messages. When Corinthians 1 clearly states, he said, let them, Paul said, the apostles, we let us speak the same thing. And there should be no isms and schisms among us but that we have failed at, unfortunately. However, that's where we're at, and we're gonna get back in, call someone, tweet someone, email, periscope, uh, send a pigeon or a dove, DM, uh, any other mood, mode of, uh, how you might say it, mo uh, mode of, uh, of media, send it out, because this will change and at least inform you of what we should be doing as nations and as a ecumenical evangelical church and government within the fiber to understand what is our purpose in this hodgepodge, what we call world and a culture that's falling apart each and every day. We have to begin to turn this 
cruise ship around from the standpoint of getting back to what God's original intentions and objectives were when he came to this earth. And Luke 4, 43 says, for this purpose, for this intent that I come into this world, that I may what? We deliver the message for the kingdom of God okay. is at hand to all in every village and every nation that's underneath the heavens, the heavens of heavens, because the heavens of heaven belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given over to the sons of men. All right, so let's get started. Uh, let's get our Bibles in our hand and let's have our confession. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I, I am. I, am. I, can do. I can do what it says, what I, it can says I can do. I'm a believer, I'm a believer. Not, a doubt. not a doubt. This is, this is the incorruptible, incorruptible undefiled, 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 unadulterated, word of God. Word of God. It, is it is the umbilical cord that, that connects my life to the purpose, the purpose and, the plan, and the plan and the design and the design and the death of Christ. Christ for my life. My life. No, weapon no weapon formed against me. Shall prosper, shall prosper because greater, because greater is, he is he that's in, that me, is in me than he, he that is in, this, in world. this world. And I'll agree with that prayer in Jesus' name said, amen. amen. I love the word of God because this is the roadmap to the reason why he birthed me out of Sister Mary Lee Henderson's birth canal through Homer Henderson's loins. And guess what? I, I have the precious pearl of great price, and I'm just trying to share it with the whole wide world. All right, last time we talked about that when God found that nations were not displaying the culture and the nature of who he was and who he is, that even when we look back as far as the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, that God judged these nations. And he turned these nations over to Israel because he promised Moses after 430 years, he told him, look, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And we talked about the Canaanites. Canaanites was a black nation. I told you I was going to explain that just briefly, that they were a black nation. And they, of course, were a nation that owned land. Mm -hmm. But God took that land from them and gave it and his, his, his purpose because they were a idolatrous nation just like we have can can really uh, associate with in this country that it was built initially uh with a godly purpose and intent when they came out of great britain persecution of religion we talked about <laughs> that and then of course they came to this country and unfortunately they used some very unsavory methodologies of owning and possessing the land that we call now the United States of America. And that's no surprise or no new news to anyone. But now we find ourselves over 250 years out and we've, we've lost and there is, from all practical purposes, no more reverential fear in our nation and in our government and from all the way through. And we have to recapture and go back to the old landmark. That means the original precept, concept, ideology, and philosophy, and theology, the study of God, and philosophy mean the thoughts that you and I are in love with, and then to change our concept and understand our convictions and our beliefs to where we believe and speak just like Jesus spoke. And then I believe, and I'm totally persuaded, as Sister Henderson was praying, we can see a turnaround in our nation and in our culture all over this world. I, I'm persuaded because as we saw her quoted previously, no good thing will he hold back from those who are what? In right alignment, right position with the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and understand that I'm the only one, Jehovah, Jireh, Yahweh, source, sustainer is what it means, Hebrew and the Greek, that then he said, will he hold back from them that walk uprightly? That means right standing. In other words, I'm not going to violate predetermined laws and principles that he established and those particular inherent laws that he established when he established the whole world and created it. 
He created man and woman and not two men and two women. Not homophobic, but we have to understand that we backed off of just speaking and saying what the word of God says. And then adultery, fornication, that's just as bad. So lying, cheating, stealing, we're not trying to put the top 10, but we have to understand when it comes to the deterioration of the family, that is the last frontier. Once your family is destroyed and we have redefined what God says, listen, let the two become one. And that's, he left, listen, he left all earth into the hands of men and women in the, in the, in the ordained process of family that he was established because he was after, well, he was a king with the kingdom and he intended to have a royal family. That's my intent in these teachings. So get your pencils and paper. That's what we talked about last time. And we're going to begin with clearly, concisely, you're going to have to pay someone to persuade you after these series of teaching, this part two, that uh, either we are heretics or charlatans and we do not possibly know what we are talking about. But these messages are straight from the throne of God. Now, let's meet me over in Revelations. We talked about it last time. Revelations, the fifth chapter, if you will. Verse, if you will, chapter nine. I give you some time to get there and do your backdrop. Or what we're talking about as you get there in your textbook, I want you to follow me along. Mm -hmm. Remember this. This is a this is just a bullet comment. To find and depend on God, not genius geniuses, intelligent people, investors, and not in business and bankers that we have to put our trust in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's what we have done because we just witnessed a total <laughs> invasion of people who are wealthy and rich who become the leaders of this country and they have been determined that there's total corruption within these organizations and institutions that when we do that, we miss it. When we fail, the Bible says in the multitudes of counsel, there is wisdom. When we seek corrupt and ungodly counsel, hear me and hear me well. The Bible clearly says when the wicked rule, the people mourn. Do it look like people are mourning in this 21st century? Then he said, but when the righteous rule, those who regard and respect with a fear and reverential fear of God, he said, and those, he said, I will not hold back any. Watch this. Good thing. I believe there's some good things that we are going to experience because we are refocusing on the mandate of for kingdom change. Go on and say it. A mandate for kingdom change. I know here in Victory World of Faith, the world eventually going to have to get on board or they're going to perish because that's the only message that Jesus mandated that we minister on this earth as citizens and ambassadors of this kingdom. Now, you should be there by now. Look what it reads beginning in verse nine. And they, what? Sung a new song. Mm -hmm. See, God says in Revelations here, this John the Revelator, he says God has a new song when we see God's mighty hand at work within the nations, within the world. So we have to understand that God gives us life and breath. And ultimately, if we're going to continue to uh, I don't like the word survive, overcome, as Sister Tennyson just quoted. We're going to have to get back and remain in the perfect will of God. Remember our foundation scripture has been Matthew 12, 1 and 2. Brother, I beseech you that you submit your bodies a living sacrifice, holding something unto God, which is your most reasonable servant. Be not what? Hold into the mold of the culture. Don't be form, in the form of the mm -hmm. culture. We mm -hmm. can't be like the world. That's we right. can't win the world being like the world. So he said, don't be pulled into the mold's fashion. Mm -hmm. And we can't use our pulpits as political platforms. If you will, We will lose respect from even those who even marry up because many times, Roman 1 says, even right and wrong. Go read it. We never hear that highly quoted in many platforms today. He said, even the ungodly know 
because there is an intuitive knowledge yes. that God placed in each and every one of our hard drives. Amen. Listen to me, saints. He placed it inside of your recreated spirit, mm -hmm. a emptiness and a void that only God can fulfill, even when we're making decisions. Before you do anything wrong, you already know you're wrong. That's right. It's called a conscience. Go ahead on and say it. It's your conscience. You may override the conscience, but your conscience lets you know you're wrong in what you're doing. Now, we have a volitional will that God will never tamper with. He said, I set before you, Deuteronomy 30, life and death, blessing and curses. He said, what? Let me give you a hint. Choose life that you and your seed may live. So we have to choose now whether we're going to do it God's way or we're going to do it our way. So that's the bottom line in this, this saga. A culture that introduces, watch this, men to God do everything that will establish more standards that exposes God's nature. Those are the nations that will survive and do and will flourish. He said, they that know their God shall do exploits. Just because we have plaster stained glass windows and steeples on the top don't mean that we know the God of this Bible. He said they, they, they said they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. The Bible says forever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. Go read Second uh, Second Timothy three, I believe it is. And then he says, he said, your traditions and your customs have made my word of no effect. In other words, it neutralizes. It totally postpones what's attached to what God promised you. And then we read Hebrew four when he said, "What they heard said this? They heard the same gospel message of the kingdom, but because it was not mixed with faith, it did not profit them." Think about that. That's God's word I'm giving you. And then he goes on to say that they that own milk are unskillful in the word. Right. That means just because I go to church, I shout, I speak in tongues, I give tithes and offerings, and I have a religious bumper sticker, I have all the good daria, the robe, the backwards collar, the cross in the pocket, don't mean a hill of beans. I know it's a little hard, but it's the truth. He said what? That you'll do all these things perfunctorily, mm -hmm. but he said, <coughs> they are still unskillful in the word. In other words, they have to be evident. He said, you judge a tree by the fruit that is bad. Oh, that, 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 that's okay. You know, we have, we have dispensational grace now. You know, God's great. God loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, I, he loves you. But he loves, you know what he loves? He loves us so much. You know why? He loved me for 40 some years. He loved me enough to tell me when I'm wrong and expect for me to change. Amen. Give me scripture. Romans 6, 1. Say, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Go over to that about the 14, 16 verse. He said, should we, if you, whoever you yield your members to, no matter what part of your anatomy, anatomy mm -hmm. he said, listen, he said, you become the same, sir. He said, either to death, sound like, look like we got from death from the mm -hmm. church out to the White House, right. or what? A righteousness, which is unto life. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm giving you, brothers and sisters, is word. Right. I'm a word man of God. Because guess what? That's the account that I got to give when I appear before Jesus. So I'm I'm over fearing man. He said the fear of man is a snare. It's a curse when you fear man that you compromise on God's word. It's tight, but it's right. But listen, here we have where he says a new song. I ain't forgot where I am. The Holy Spirit got me. He said when we do that, when we manifest the nature of God, any country with a moral code, it will be destroyed. Immoral will be destroyed eventually. We look here. We don't. We haven't gotten it through our little thick skull yet. We haven't gotten a message yet that when we violate the inherent laws of God, that God said Moses told Noah, every patriarch of the Bible said, "Listen, when you violate God's in, intrinsic laws." Just like law of lift, thrust, and elevation, there has to be consequences. You go out there and you don't do proper maintenance on that plane, it's gonna fall back to the earth. If you, if a fish get out the water, he gonna die. They go. They, I watch uh, Pagomer 
on, on CNN where they talk about the last begins of earth and uh, Paragonia. Yeah, you got to watch it. I love this by nature. But anyway, because it shows just how intricate the ecosystem is made to where man is even killing the animals who God created that they have a purpose in the earth. Now, why is that so important? Because laws never change. Laws is not to hurt us. Laws is to protect us. And laws is to keep us from what? Long time memories of making wrong and bad choices. Just like adultery or fornication. When you find yourself in a quagmire or lying, cheating, and stealing, you get caught stealing. And if you're in government and you get caught violating just in God's inherent laws, if I ask you, President Clinton, what comes to your mind? If I ask you about what? All the beautiful music that has been made, all Kelly, what comes to your mind? Because listen, sin has consequences. And God gives us inherent laws so that you won't have those memories. Yeah, but I know the Bible said he cast all of my sins into the sea of forgiveness. And you right. But guess what? Don't go in there. You read that he removes the memory. And some of the consequences. Think about it. Pause. Meditate. Say law. So we have to understand that. That eventually sin and these things we're seeing in our culture and our world will destroy us. Now, let's get back to scripture. I was just a foretaste to what your, 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 your taste buds. Look what he said. You are what? Worthy to take the stroll and to open its what? Seal. This is this is what we're seeing going on, really, to some degree in the world today. This is Revelation, John the Revelator. He says, and have redeemed us, what? To God. This is Jesus. Who can, who can open up the seals of the book? And nobody in heaven could open the seals. And then there come that Galilean, the walked the descended beaches of, of, of Israel, what? And he says, they're the lamb that take away the sins of the world. He can open the seals. And this is what took place. And have redeemed us to God by his what? Blood. There's the only atoning blood that can remove the stench of sin from all humanity. Out of what? Every tribe and tongue. There it is. Look at it. every tribe and every tongue. That's why we talk the new heavenly prayer language is speaking with other tongues as the Holy Spirit. He said, when we pray, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, he said, he depends on no tongue, he depends not on the man, but unto God. Why? That's mysteries that we're praying. And we just taught on that. Go back and listen to it. We did six, six part on releasing the governor. It will bless your, bless your soul. Go check it out. And he says what? And out of every tribe and tongue and people and what? Nation. There it is. And every nation and every what tongue and people, verse 10, and have made what us kings and priests where to our God. And we shall what reign where? Oh no, you kidding me. I know that ain't in the Bible. Not in heaven. Abba Father, how be thy name? Holy thy name. Abba Father mean Abba, mean God just don't want you to come and spend eternity in his kingdom. He wants all of us to bring somebody with us. Right. How be thy name, Abba, source, sustainer, thy name, thy kingdom come, his dominion, dominion, his doctrine, mean he's ruler over heaven and earth. Be, that thy kingdom come on earth as it is, where? In heaven. Why? Because God no longer needs us in heaven. He needs us in the earth. We are the only answer to the world's condition when we discover our true identity. He said the earth mourn. Remember we read it in Romans 8. The earth mourn and quake and hemorrhage for the sons of God to arise in this hour. In other words, the whole world is looking and searching for the true sons of God. And we on we on furlough, we on gone AWOL many times. Not all of us, put your rods down. But we should be impacting this world culture and not allowing this world culture to define and impact the body of Christ and the kingdom citizenry 
and the ambassadors that we have been called to be. Now, that being understood, I want us to understand this as salvation for the nations. This is the salvation of the nations that we are dealing with, kingdoms and priests. Let's go to Psalm number Psalm 2. Let's go to Psalms 2. No, 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 no. Stop at first Peter. Let's do it. Let me do a, a pit stop. You know how you on, on race car? Let's do a pit, pit stop in first Peter, second chapter, verse, if you will, uh, number eight, part B, beginning eight, part B. This is very important that even Peter, now this he got down because even Peter understood kingdom and citizenry. Look at what first Peter two says. Let's begin reading, if you will, for continuity, verse 8. And a stone of what? Stumbling. And a rock of offense. See, Jesus was a rock of an offense. Remember, it goes back to Matthew 16. And he said what? Peter, you shall be a small petra, but then there will be a what? Big petra. In other words, a rock, which was he was talking about, is the government, Isaiah 96. Let me connect the dots for you. That's what he's talking about here in Revelation, that Jesus was established what? Foundation, and the foundation was a kingdom that will have justice and righteousness, and it shall have no end. All the way back to Daniel, they understood kingdom. Daniel 8, Daniel 7, they expressively spoke about a kingdom when Gabriel and Michael had to come down front off with the Prince of Persia, beat them upside their heads, and the message came the first time instantly, then the second time it took 21 days. And it was they were teaching and manifesting a kingdom, kingdom and priest. Now, that being understood, then they what? Then they stumble, being what? Disobedient. There it is. It's disobedient. It ain't the devil. It's disobedient. To what? The word. Underline that. It's disobedient to the word. To which they also were what? Appointed. You and I have been appointed. Remember government? They said, you have, Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Why? Because it's appointment. It's a government. You appoint. Here's the thing. We hire and fire. We vote presidents in a nation, in a, in a, in a, in a city, a governor. You, you, what? you vote them in, you can vote them out. But in a government, you have been what? Chosen by God, the king. See, that's the difference between a religion and a government, a kingdom. There are different diametrically opposed day and night. That's why, well, why the hell this about uh, understanding, rediscovering the kingdom? Because religion and denominationalism, Jesus never taught on either one of them. Never. Never joined the hand Sanhedrin Council. Never joined the Pharisees, the Sudacees, and the Herodians. He never. He joined, God joined John the Baptist's school of thought, and John the Baptist came teaching, repent for the kingdom of God has arrived. So I want to Join the school of thought that God joined that school. Hmm. I believe you're smart enough and intelligent enough. Let me appeal to your intelligence. Why wouldn't we join the same school God joined? Hmm. Pause, meditate, say love. Think about it in your quiet time when you go and pray to the God you say you love. But God joined John the Baptist school of thought just like when he came. Paul joined that same school. I wonder why we haven't joined that school, many of us. Because we embrace a Greek and Roman philosophy from Martin Luther. Why you, why you keep saying that? I get tired of you saying that. Well, because he said my people are not destroyed because they don't go to church and have the Bible. They are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. And they have rejected knowledge. So when John came, Jesus came, Paul came, all those, when Jesus came, even after the grave, he taught one message, repent, fellas, not go down and destroy the Roman Empire. Ain't that what you're going to do, boss? <laughs> no. I'm building a spiritual kingdom. Luke 20 and 17 said, now you won't have to go here or there to another conference or a seminar or listen to what your pastor's saying. I ain't saying you can listen to your pastor, put your rocks down, but make sure you study your own constitution. Yeah. Because when you don't know the law, anybody can bamboozle you to believe anything. Cause just because it come out of the mouth of a man 
Don't make it true. Roman 4, you know where I'm headed now. 4 and 3 says, let God be true and let every man. If he or she standing on two feet, they subject to error. Let God be true. I'm going to stick with what God said. And God joined John's ministry. And he said, a student <laughs> ought to be just like his teacher. Um, let me, can, I ask, can I ask you this parenthetical question? Are you teaching what the one Jesus that you say you gave your life to, your Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, whatever Hebrew or Greek name you want to put on it? Have you submitted your body, your mind, your message to him, the message he came with? I'm going to leave that with you. Now, so we see here, he said, this is the stumbling block that the builders rejected, and it became what? An offense. And it's still offense 2,000 years out, over 6,000 years since God started this whole perspective and philosophy, precept, concept, and ideology, and man still jacking it up. But it Watch this, lean close to the screen, but it don't have to be you. <laughs> Look what he says. He said, but you are a chosen generation. See, you've been chosen. You wasn't voted in. You were chosen. That's why you're in the family. Oh, you were chosen by God. You were handpicked. He knew that you would come to know him as his personal savior. And all eight plus billion, no matter what race, ethnicity, uh, 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 pedigree they may have, they have to come to Jesus because he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And no man coming to the Father except by me. That's scripture. So I don't care what people say, you can try to use Muhammad, a, a Buddha, and Elijah Muhammad and put Jesus and him on the same platform. I see what people do. They try to marry them up together. No, sir. Listen, Muhammad's still in the grave. <laughs> Buddha, still in the grave. Jesus is the only one got up out that watery grave, that tomb, and said, he that was once dead is now alive. And guess what? He has proven by the billions, possibly, who are out here saying, Jesus is the one that opened my eyes to discover the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and not religion and traditions of men. Guess what? When we understand that, look what he says. He says, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, underline these, a holy nation, there's that nation, his own so special people that, what, you may, what, proclaim the praises of, what, him, who called you. See, he called you, he chose you, and picked you and I. Out of what darkness into what his marvelous light. Verse what ten says what who once were not of a people. They're, they're, so you don't automatically by default become a citizen and ambassador. You have to be handpicked and chosen by God. Cause you and not none of us had enough sense to make Jesus the Lord of our life. He said what, but with the love and kind of he drew them what through the love that he expressed to us. Love and kindness have I drawn them. Then he said this, who have what? Not obtained mercy, but now have what? Obtained mercy. Beloved, verse 11, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. In other words, we just passing through. I ain't got time to go to Hebrew 11 where they said there was those who were uh, citizens of the kingdom. Never got to see it, but they had an expectation and a hope for a city not made by hand but was created and made by the creator, Jehovah, that one day they would experience, but they never experienced it here on this earth. But one day they will live eternally on this planet, on this earth. Watch well, this. Who were not people, but I'm sorry, beloved, the so grand person, sustained what? From fleshy what? Lust. Which war against what? The soul. There's the soul. Spirit. So go down and say, I'm a I am a spirit, I possess a soul, and I live, live, have, I live in a body. That's just what? The house you live in. He said, but there's a war going on, even to keep you blinded from the message of the king. Watch this. Having your what? Conduct honorable among what? Gentiles. So even here, we see the message of the kingdom was to also our conduct and behavior. 
I talk to people, well, it don't matter if my, my pastor got a girlfriend in the pulpit. It don't matter if I just live any kind of way, fornicate, community, because I'm under grace now. And that's the message. It may be subtle, but that's the message come from your celebrity Christians that's in America and many times around this globe. And they coming down. Watch this. Against you as evildoers, they may, but by what? The good works which they what? Observe. In other words, the life that you live. Let's glorify God well. In the day of what? Visitation. There it is. We talked about what we talked about. Just to recap, it's the, what? The, the tribe, the Issachar tribe, they what? They was able to discern the times and the seasons of God's visitation. Here is, we're learning that we are missing many times in many of our evangelical ecumenical churches, the visitation of what God's intentions were. And I'm giving it to you when I give you Matthew 4, 17, Luke 4, 43, Matthew 10, 7, Matthew 25, 34. There's a kingdom that Jesus is after and to popularize and colonize this whole wide world and not just a few churches on a street corner. Watch this. Now, I just want to show you that right there because we're now going to deal with what we talked about. Psalm 2, meet me over there. We talked about the kings and priests and kingdom response to a nation of rebellion. Write that down. Kingdom, a kingdom response to national rebellion. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to focus on now because we dealt with salvation of nations, how God broke that down. We see. That was his whole intent, was the salvation of nations. And if I can, I'm going to go back and revisit and show you how Paul dealt with the same thing we're dealing with in the 21st century in today's culture with the ecumenical evangelical church. And Paul had a totally diametrically opposed message, totally different than what many in our churches are presenting to the whole world as the representative and the mouthpiece of Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Are you there? Psalm 2. Look what he says. Why do the nations rage? This is this is this is David pinning this under the inspiration of, of God the Holy Spirit. He said, and the people's plot of vain thing. He said, the people are plotting against God. Listen. The kings of the earth. Didn't I just talk about the G7, the G20? They are plotting many times because the voice of God is heralding across the pulpit or the mic to get them to realize you have an obligation to, as a nation to the citizenry of your countries. And when you fail, now your citizens are going to suffer because of your lack of leadership. Listen. There's nothing new underneath the sun, Solomon said. He says, and the rulers take counsel where? Together. Notice, take note, underline this. They did not seek out wise counsel. And unfortunately, sometimes you can't find wise counsel even in the ecumenical evangelical church. So that means the only really wise counsel you need to seek out is in this constitution or someone who have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to his people. This is what God is saying, that the rulers of the nations, look at your nations, Ukraine, Russia, U.S., Caribbeans, all over this globe, nobody had the answer to the dilemma and the economy and the condition of now the people are rising up and killing their leaders, destroying their city. Tiananmen Square, China. Look at it. Don't have to take my word. Go and do your due diligence. They're falling apart like a $2 suitcase. And nobody has anyone they want to listen to. And everybody just like wet wood. It won't burn. This is, what, this is what God is saying. He says, against the Lord. Who, who are they counseling against? Against the Lord. In other words, we don't want your religion. We don't want your Holy Spirit. We don't want your instruction from your religious dogma and your 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 tradition that listen, we we, we smarter than you, God. 
That's what men are seeing. Mm -hmm. Listen to what God has to say on this, <laughs> on this dialogue that you listening to every day and some of you all day instead of spending more time in this here holy tent constitution. Mm -hmm. Look what he says. Against Lord and against what? His anointed saying. He's saying, what is his anointed saying? His word. He said, you even speak in making laws that violates God's laws. And God is not thrilled about it. Let's find out what else God is saying, trying to get to all of us. Watch this. Verse 3. Let us break their bonds in pieces. So man says, let us destroy this system of God and this system of trying to get us to conform to a holy instruction from a God that we cannot see or even listen to anyone who has an ear to let them hear what the spirit says unto the church. Mm -hmm. Look at what it says. He says, and cast away their cords from us. He said, we don't want no part of your message. We don't want no part of rediscovering the kingdom. We don't want no more part of what you have to say. We've been here listening to y'all for 2,000 years and y'all saying the same thing and it ain't working. So they might have a little right to say and think the way they're thinking. Because many in the body of Christ think and act just like they do. Watch this. Verse 4. And he who says where? In the heavens shall what? Laugh. God say, when you get through talking all your stuff, I'm going to laugh in your face. This is God speaking. The Lord shall hold them where? In this great derosion. Then he shall speak to them, what? In his wrath. In other words, I'm going to get the last word, fellas. I'm going to see and show you, Matthew 24, 14, that I, listen, until the message of the kingdom have been held to all the nations, then the end shall come. He said, listen, and there's nothing you can do to stop. Watch this. Then he shall speak to them where? In his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. He's saying, uh, some of the stuff we're seeing is a result of our rebellion and turning away and a lack of reverential fear from God. Write that down. We're suffering, brothers and sisters, because and due to a lack of reverential plain respect for the God that created everything you see. And, and, and listen, I've already said, we're talking about generational. That's every, what, 20 years. Every, every, four, no, four, every 40 years was a generation. And it stressed them in the deep displeasure. Yes, I have set my king. In other words, amidst all of your evil and all your spit and spewing out your, your euphemisms and, and disregard for my ordained laws and principles, I'm going to still have me a king, and that king is still going to establish my kingdom. Look what he says. Yes, I have set my king on where? My holy hill of Zion. He said, even though you're spitting and sparing on and trying to tell me, you ain't going to do what I say, but I'm going to still establish what I established in the beginning. And that's the holy Zion, the holy hill of God, the ordinances of his kingdom. Watch this. Verse 7, and I will declare... The decree and the Lord has said to me, you are my son. There it is. That's Jesus. Today I have what begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nation. Watch this. He said, I'm going to give you the nations for your inheritance. That's the inheritance. See, that's the kingdom. It's not a church. It's not a denomination. It's not a religion. It's nations. Look what he says. A nation's for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Notice, not the ends of heaven, but the ends of the earth. See, it's all in the Bible. Verse 9, ye shall break them what? With a rod of iron. You shall dash them where? To pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O king. He's telling them now. You need to come and get my wisdom. You need to come and understand what? God's original purpose for why he created a nation. What we just talked about. 
He said, I placed every nation strategically before the foundation of the world. And they are there for my purpose, not for themselves to establish their own thrones and kingdoms and nations, but it's for me. It's so that the world will see that I'm Jehovah Jireh, Jireh yes. Jehovah Nisi. I'm the king. Yes. And without me, listen, you can't do nothing. Amen. If you don't believe me, go turn on your television and watch news. I give you 15 minutes and get back with me. Call me. You want my phone number? And I guarantee you, you'll say, you know that brother telling the truth. Because don't nobody have the answer to your, your, your and my problems except Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Abba, sustainer and provider. Listen to what he says. He said, you shall break them where in the uh, rods of iron. You shall can't crush them in the pieces like pottery vessels. Now, therefore, be wise. That's what we're seeking, wisdom. O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord, what? Here it is, with reverential fear. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. In other words, when you kiss, when I kiss this word, I'm kissing the sun. Go get your Bible. Go ahead. Ain't nobody going to get mad at you. See, I'm on national TV. I'm going to call the whole world. <laughs> and I'm kissing the word because this is the sun. This is the sun. Go down and say it. The word of God is the sun. Yes. They are synonymous. Okay. When you have the sun, you have the word. When you have the word, you have the sun. And they too have become one. <laughs> Watch this. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings, and be instructed by the judges of the earth. Save the Lord. Serve the Lord what with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, least what he be angry what, and you perish in the way when he when when his wrath is kindled. But what a little. In other words, there's a wrath side of God. No, he don't have wrath against us. He's talking about the spirit Amen. of the nation and of the That's world. Right. Blessed are all those who what put their what. Trust in who? In Jehovah, our God, the creator, sustainer. Now, so we see here in Psalms 2, penned by David, what God has said about the condition. I'm going to give you in a brief moment six to eight to eight principles of comments. I'm going to say components of a nation, what a nation should look like. But I need to go back to Acts 7 real quick. Let's go back to Acts 17. And we need to revisit what, what took place with Paul, the apostle, when he met them at the Ekron in on the Mars Hill and how Paul, let's look at how Paul dealt with public consensus about God. I'm going to give you time to get back there so that you can see what Paul had to say at the church Epicureans to the Epicureans. This is worth look at. This is worth all the weeks and go. Look at what he says in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts. This is Paul coming through, just like on CNN, C SPAN, when a lot of these religious representatives of the of the of the of the religious circle answers the question that they've been given about homosexuality and lesbianism and about you know who can be saved and and uh, whether you can just be a good person and go to heaven and, and all inclusion now that everybody's going to be saved. Let's see if Paul had the same message because this is the final frontier right here. And so don't let nobody see. You know what Colossians say? Let me, let me go there real quick, like, to Colossians because, see, the Holy Spirit be feeding me through his word so that we don't, we don't fall victim mm -hmm. and be bamboozled by what people say just because they're behind a podium or because they, they, they represent or uh, possibly because they say they believe us. Colossians 2 says this. Verse, if you will, number seven. No, number six. As you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him. In other words, walk just like you walk when you have been converted as a believer. Rooted and built up in him and established in faith. As you have been taught, abound and wear in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man cheat you through philosophy. There it is, in love with their thoughts, their idea or what they think God is saying. And empty deceit, that means being deceived. 
according to what? The traditions of men, not, to, not, not, not of God, but of men. According to what? The basic principles where? Of the world. In other words, they teach you lullabies and things of this world system and not of God's kingdom system. His culture, how God functions, how God acts, how what God expect, expects them. He said, now you have to prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed to the philosophies and the deceptions of men. Right. Having itching ears. Watch this. He says, basic principles. He said, what well, the basic principles of the world and not according to what Christ. Notice it's not according to Christ, the anointed one. In other words, the king, the anointed one, Jesus Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of what? The Godhead bodily. Mm -hmm. Number 10, verse 10. And you are what complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. In other words, we are in Christ now. So we have to represent his kingdom. Now, that being understood, that, that shows us here that it can happen. Now, let's go. I'm going to go to 1 Timothy, number 4. The Holy Spirit just leading me to deal with this. First, First Timothy 4, chapter, now the Spirit expresses says that in the latter times, because we're talking about nations and 40 generations and how men and women are being deceived from the pulpit. He says, in that latter time, some will depart from the faith. There it is. And we see that all inclusion message. Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits, small or less. Un, un, what? Unharnessed spirits, demonics, demons. And doctrines, what? Of demons. They're given doctrines, but their doctrines are from demons. Everybody going to be saved. You can live in a kind of way and God understands. And nobody's perfect. So God understands, you know, you like a woman and you like a man. And, you know, we all, you know, can change our anatomy by having co co a cosmetic surgery. I can cut off my penis and put a hole down there. But listen, that don't give you a, a, a uterus. So you still a man. I know, I know it's tough. Somebody got to say it though. Now what people do with it, it's not your responsibility to decide what other people believe about how they want to live their lives. But as men and women of God, we have an inherent responsibility and a mandate from God in the kingdom change to speak the truth. Because only the truth will set any of us free. I know that's what set me free, was me realizing that I was wrong. Watch this. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy. We talked about Peter and hypocrisy. We hypo hypocrites. Like a, like a, 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 a what did this new car they got out? It's like a, 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 a hybrid. We're hybrids now. Hypo hybrids, hypocrites. The world is so confused. They show on Facebook, they line them up outside by the hundreds of young people. And they tearing the dough down. The, even the world trying to figure out what's going on. And they call it church. They got a cross up in front of the pulpit. And it's hundreds of young kids in there. Look like they're just oscillating <laughs> and praising God. But they in there, you can't even understand what they're saying. Wow. And they got them lined up outside by the hundreds. Go look at it on Facebook in, in New York. That's just how bad this thing is. Cause we done watered down and they got this young fellow, I forgot what his name. He coming out there telling them, you all right, God loves you. You can live in a kind of way, just come in here and we give you an emotional high. We stroke your emotions and tell you to go on back out there and live in a kind of way. Nowhere are they standing on the ordained doctrines and the principles of the kingdom. Because God said the world will love its own. That's right. Amen. I'm giving you the word. You ain't going to draw a crowd when you're telling the truth. He said, because they have itching ears. Look what he says. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience, what? Seared with a what? Hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to what? To abstain from what? Foods of God created to be received with thanksgiving to those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. And it goes on this thing about dietary matters and issues. And then we have to understand that this is what Paul had to address here, like he did with Timothy. Now let's go back over here and deal with Paul here at uh, uh, these men at 
Epicureans and the Stoic philosophers in verse number 18. Then certain Epicureans and Stoic philosophers, these just like what we where we are today, everybody just got a new twist, a new philosophy. Oh, this the new age. And, you know, uh, one fella, I ain't gonna call his name if I did, you know him. He said, whenever you, forget, whenever you uh, fail to remember, forget your uh, 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 history. When you don't forget your history, you stalemate and ruin your destiny. And and the one Oprah host said, oh, are y'all received that? Wait a minute. When did we get so publicly successful that we can tell people to forget what? The history. The history is the kingdom. The history is Jesus. So you don't tell people to get their history. Because his, he said he that forgets his history is bound to repeat it, repeat it in the future. Watch this. He says, encountered him, and the same said, what does this babbler? They said, this boy, he told my Paul, was a babbler. In other words, they thought he had come to expound about a male resurrection and a female message. This is what, when you studied in the Hebrew and Greek, that's what they are talking to him when they call him a babbler. When, when did you see the word babbler came out way back in Genesis 11 when they tried to buy, uh, build a tower of Babel? It wasn't the fact that God had a problem with building towers because he, he told every one of Moses, Solomon, David, he told all of them to build something. God ain't got no problem with you building things. He got an issue with you building stuff for yourself, for your own self-glory, and not for the things of God. And he confound their language. They began to say, Baba, 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 give me a brick, Baba, 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 give me a screwdriver, Baba, 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 Baba. And they, that's why they call it Babel. The Tower of Babel. That's almost where we are now. Went to say, Others said, this they, they dialoguing about what, what this fellow Paul is talking about, because they already know he used to be Saul. Watch this. And others said it seemed to be what? A proclaimer of what? Foreign gods. So they associated him with being a part of some foreign gods. Small less. He was just another religion among all the rest. Is that not what Christianity is? I know that people get woodpecker left when I say Christianity is no more than a religion than Buddha. Harry Krishna, Confucianism, Scientology, uh, uh, you name it, secular humanism, all of them come from Egypt. That's what they are saying here. So now watch this dialogue. Let's find out how Paul addressed it. Because he preached them Jesus and the resurrection. That's what they were saying. Oh, he just wasn't talking about this man, Jesus, and then the resurrection must have been a male and a female because that's what they believed understood about resurrection. Verse 19, and they took him and brought him where? To the apocalypse. This was a place just like a community center where everybody came just like the synagogue. That's where they went and everybody, male and women could go there to where they just simply, all of them took a chance. They're like spoken words they do today. And they spoke what they believed based on their philosophy, the thought, main school of thought that they was in love with. That's why school of thoughts are important and where you get the message from, whether it's the concept, you can be wrong when you miss the precept, the original intent of why the idea came from God. When we miss the idea of God, we miss all of God and we take up the concept of humanity and those things I just read in, 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 in uh, 1 Timothy, 3rd chapter, and Colossians 2. Watch this. May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak. So they, they, they interrogated to Paul here. Let's find out if Paul got on CNN and national TV around the world, and he said, well, you know, uh, I, I, I like homosexuals. I, you know, I'm not homophobic. And, uh, you know, they're good people, and I believe God won't stop them from entering into his heaven. That's not what the Bible teaches. So it is important what men and women in God stand on and they are decreeing because they are there to represent the king, remember, from his kingdom. Watch this. Verse 20, for you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Watch this. All of a sudden, when Paul started talking, they ain't cheering and jumping up and shouting. That's what I saw on, on TV when this fella here, he started talking about, well, 
I don't believe all that, what they've been talking about, about these promiscuity uh, uh, and, 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 and lifestyle that's not conducive uh, uh, to, to standards of culture in today's society. They didn't start shouting. Let's find out what Paul said. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the uh, 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 Athenians and the foreigners who were what they are sent there what in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Be very, very wise in particular about something always talking about is new. Verse 2, 22, then Paul stood in the midst of the apocalypse. This was a place where people would stand and share their religious persuasion and the conviction. Let's find out if Paul watered down the truth or you know, he just simply spoke what the word of God said. Let's, let's venture to discover that so, so we can eradicate ignorance out of our lives because just like it was, sometimes like in First, second century, the only one read the, the scriptures was the Pope. And I, not like the, uh, uh, the Ephesians, for they were much wiser than Thessalonians. The Bereans searched the scriptures to mm -hmm. see if what the apostles taught was true. I don't believe we're doing that nowadays because we got too much illiteracy in the pews. Watch this. And said, men of Athens, I perceive that you are what? All what in all things you are very religious mm -hmm. underline that mm -hmm. i ain't heard that yet from any of the spiritual leaders today to some degree now I'm, this boy he is gino jenkins that boy i know y'all don't want to talk about him 23 verse 23 for as i was passing through and considering the ob objects of your worship things not true living God, but thing. I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Underline that right there. In other words, even a God to unknown gods. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. In other words, you worship a God you don't even know. This is what Paul said. Well, like, could you imagine Paul going to CNN and speaking to the masses, to the multitudes, that he said, I find that you're very religious and you don't even know the God that you're serving? Check me, vet me, proof text me, go back and prove it with your intelligence yourself and prove not for me. I'm fully persuaded. I want you to not be ignorant. Like he said, deceived by men. Watch this. Verse 24, God who has made the world and everything in it. When last time you heard that? Since he is the what? Lord of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you just don't know what to say, wait a minute, let me pull out my Bible and read what Jesus and Apostle Paul said and I let the chips fall where they may. Can I give you a little wisdom? That's probably be the wisest thing. If you ever get invited to talk nationally, I pray I do. Because guess what I'm going to give them? I'm going to give them what thus saith the Lord what the Holy Wit said, and then it's up to them to choose how they choose to live. I may not get invited again, but they'll never be able to appear before God and say they did not know. Watch this. He says in the earth, he says, in order to worship the men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation. There it is. All of us were made from one blood. Every nation came from God, baby. We are sons, but some of us have sap lost our minds. For men, watch this, every man of, nation of men to dwell where? On all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed time and the boundaries of their dwelling. Even this station that we own, God ordained for me to be here today to tell the world Ain't but one way, and that's through Jesus. Verse 27, so that they should speak, watch this, so that they may what? Seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow for him and find him through though he is not far well from each one of us. Listening to him, but with your listening ears, 
Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. In other words, our economy. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Come on, now every one of us right. with our smart, intelligent self, and we have become food. He said, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. You might say, well, I believe, but you live like there is no God. Verse 20, therefore, since we are the offspring of God, huh? Every one of us come out of a woman's womb is a spring of God. But that don't mean you his, you his creation, but you're not a son. Until he says, the men has received him, he gave them power and authority to become the sons of God. Until you bow and kiss the son, you still lost. You're a sinner without a savior. We ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone because some people think they can pay their way in. Something shaped by art and men's devices. Verse 30, truly these things of ignorance, these times, we're living in times of ignorance, brothers and sisters. That's why you got to know this truth for yourself. God overlooked Watch this. Here's the crescendo. Here's the, 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 the I got some uh, butter pecan today with some cherry and whipped cream on top. Watch this. He said what? But now. Go ahead on and say, but now. But now. But now. Watch this. Commands all men. There's that A-L-L again. <laughs> all. All men. All. You need Hebrew and Greek. All. All what? Men. All men, one but one man, he spoke to one man, created all man. Pulled out a one man, a woman with a woman, <laughs> and created eight plus billion more man. Some with a womb, some without a womb. Don't get it twisted. Look what he says. But now commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent. Melanoma, change how you've been trained and conditioned to think. Sound like he said, what you've been doing, you got to do 180 and begin to understand the kingdom. Watch this. I'm going to show you. I got two minutes. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has obtained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him where? From the dead. When was the last time you heard that? And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, who will, we will hear you again on this matter. <laughs> At least some of them said, brother bro, Paul, I'm going to get back with you. <laughs> However, so Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed among them Damascus and Aparigasi, a woman named Damaris and others with them. There it is. Well, what did Paul teach? I got a few minutes. Let's go over to Acts 8 28. I'm out of time. Watch this. Here we go right here. It ain't gonna take me long. Verse 28. Therefore, let it be known to you that salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had what? Said these words, the Jews departed in bad, what uh, and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years. This is Matthew, Acts 28, verse 30. Two years in his own rented house and what received all who came to him. They came to him. When you're a leader, they'll find you where you at. You won't have to go looking for them. Verse 31, this is the crescendo. Let me put a little sprinkle, a little candy on top of this. Preaching what? The kingdom of God. Underline it. Oh, don't you change that page. Don't you, don't you cut that television. Don't you turn that YouTube and Facebook streaming. He said what? Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which what? Pertain to the Lord, the owner. Jesus Christ, there it is. God the man and Jesus God back in the earth, bringing what he lost in Genesis 2 and 3 back to full manifestation through John the Baptist, Jesus, and Paul. With all what confidence, so you got to be confident in this thing. Do it sound like I'm confident? 
Don't ask that question. No one what? Forbidding him. At the end of that, I wrote victory. Listen, we thank God for you tuning in this evening. <laughs> Listen, we just want you to know Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God and that I'm a son. And I desire to be born again. I've heard the message from the man of God. And I'm fully persuaded now, just like Paul, who was once Saul. You don't have to fall off a horse. But, Lord, I want the scales to fall from my eyes. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And because of that, you say, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I receive you, Lord, as my personal Savior. And you say, you will never allow me to be put to shame. So thank you, Lord, that now I'm a new creation. What does I say? Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Your old sin nature is gone. But you said that from the core of your heart, the seat of your subconscious state. Now you can begin all over. All your sins have been forgiven. Past, present, and future. And if you like the part of the song, you may be in the church, you may be a, a leader of some capacity in a building. But you have really never, ever understood the gospel message of the kingdom and how to be born again. The Nicodemus, he came, 72 years old, head of the Sanhedrin, head of the synagogue. And he came and realized that he was unsaved. And he was born again at midnight, something about midnight, by two in the morning. She said, Marvel not that you must be born again. That which is of flesh is flesh, that which is of the spirit is spirit. In other words, you have to be born from a book. Not because mom and them and daddy and them was in the church all their life and went to sleep and you think you're gonna make it in just riding on their coattail. Every every soul gotta come on its own merit. And the subproduct of son found himself in the pig pen, just like all of us been in the pig pen, but he didn't have to stay there. And he says, from his mind, what? You got to get back to your, your mind. You got to get back to the mind of Christ. And he says, here I am in a pig pen eating a husk of hogs. Because he wasted all his inheritance when he was connected before with the whole ocean when he was with our Father, the source and the sustainer. And all of us can, can, can relate to that. But when his mind came back to him, he realized, man, I, I've been a fool going somewhere. And he headed back, and his father knew what he placed in that boy. God put a part of him in every human being on this earth. But we got a volitional will to choose to or choose not to. I like it that way because it's an individual sport. All <laughs> right. It's the most serious sport that you will ever be involved in. But it's just as real. When he came back, the only time you see a king never ran. But this father was running back when he saw that boy coming up that road. I don't know how long ago, but he was looking up that desert trail a long time. When he came, he reached out and grabbed him and hugged him and kissed him with those stinking steps. For all of us were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And in sin that our mothers conceived us. All oh, our righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't care how good or how sanctimonious you think you might be. Listen, until you've been washed in the blood, first, your sins still remain. And his daddy said, boy, look here. The son, watch this, that was dead. This boy, when you're not connected to the kingdom, to right, standing right, the Lamb of God, you and I were dead. I don't care if you got a surgery collar as big as a darn holy bow tie. It don't matter whether you preach to the thousands and millions of songs. He said, many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, I prophesied, I preached, I cast out demons, I healed the sick, raised the dead. And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. What a, what a, could you imagine that in eternity? That you you saw everybody else born again, and you and you end up being unsaved and spending this eternal separation from God in an abyss called hell. Boy, that's the biggest fool I can ever imagine. But the world is full of them because they're so smart. They think they're smarter than the God they created. And he said, "Listen, put a robe of righteousness on the boy, 
put rings on his finger so when he go down with his signet, he will put it in the wax so he can make his withdraw the charter to Abba Father. Put sandals on his feet, crown on his head. He said, now, that's the son that I'm talking about. Now go kill the fatted calf and let's have a party. Let's have a feast. God just want to have a feast of party with you until we have a feast in the kingdom. Listen, and the Bible said the old elder son got jealous. He heard music and song and Kayla going on in the house. He said, what's going on there? He said, that brother of yours. Well, that's the religious. They always going to be hanging out somewhere near the church. And he said, what? Son, look at everything I have belong to you. But you were so tied up in religion that you missed the kingdom. Ah! Now, that being understood, I encourage you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the physical evidence, speak of other tongues, and the Holy Spirit give you other. Look at just lift your hands and say, I desire to pray in heavenly language. I desire to pray in Telelebo, Kurebe, Sindirina, Nathana. De Korobo, Telelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
Why? Because Jesus said we're seated, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's an Old Testament scripture. Now you can use that for our learning, but now we're in a dispensation of grace. And we understand that what? He says we are what? Now complete where? In him. As Christ was, so are we where? In the earth. Uh, boy, that's, I, do, I know that, that that's good stuff there. But listen, so that 10%, so that free offering will above the 10%, and then a free sacrificial offering, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, God, put that on your heart. You know the voice of God. And so that seed, guess what? That he said he'll allow Luke 6, 30, that give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He says he'll cause men. Don't no money fall from heaven. He says he'll cause men to give into your bosom. That means somebody's holding your blessing. <laughs> Listen, but you got to connect to the process. It's kingdom, commonwealth. Read Ephesians 3. It's commonwealth of Israel. It's God's economy. When you sow a seed, he says he'll, he'll, he said he'll bless you more than you can imagine. He says, whosoever do these things and trust in this process, he says, whoever give a mother, father, sister, brother, houses, land. He said he'll give in this life, not when you get into the kingdom, when we do that drive-by in heaven before we hit back to earth. He said he'll say what? A hundredfold return in this life. That's scripture. That being understood, go to Cash App, dollar sign, BWFCC, Cash App, dollar sign, BWFCC, and sow that seed and believe God for a supernatural intervention in many different facets of your life. Listen, we thank God for you. And like we always tell you here at Victory, 1 John 5 and 4 says, Whosoever born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. And remember that Jesus is Lord. And all you're getting, get wisdom, get knowledge, and understanding. And the best is yet to come when you're living and walking by faith that something good is going to happen to you and through you. He told Abraham, I'm going to bless you. We're going to talk about that next time in Sunday. I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing to all the nations. In other words, he wants you to get beyond your little finite so just, I don't know. He wants you to be a blessing to all the nations. Listen. See you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock by the study. Sunday, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. We smile. Don't look here. We keep on getting good and good. Hey, we thank you. We pray for you. We love you. Till next time, keep walking by faith and not by sight. All of those things.